welcome to The Pulse, powered by Heartbeats Hate, a show where we will take you inside the minds of purpose-driven people who have found their passion while facing adversity. My first guest today is Emily O'Brien, the founder of Comeback Snacks. Emily founded this organization while she was serving time in a Canadian prison, and her team consists of other former inmates who are also looking for a second chance. The tagline for Comeback Snacks, popcorn so good, it's criminal. My comeback story actually started with a really big mistake. And in 2015, I was living in Toronto, running a really good business. And I'd, prior to that, I'd graduated from university, grew up in a great house, great family, great parents. Everything was perfect, um, except the fact that I was always very introverted. And so throughout high school, I kind of got into alcohol and some drugs to kind of get over this awkwardness that I felt in, in the social scene. All through university, kind of did the same thing, but it was just part of the culture there. And I always managed to keep my grades up. I always had a job. I always volunteered. So it seemed on track for me. And when I moved to Toronto in 2015, this kind of went all, it went to another level, basically. Um, there was just even more alcohol. There was just the work that I was doing. I was working in social media. So there was lots of events lots of gatherings. Um, there were some personal issues that I was dealing with at the time. And as a female business owner, you don't want to seem weak and you don't really want to talk about it. And I also, there's parts of my job that I really liked. You know, I can't say, oh, I hated partying because it's not true. Mm. But the problem started when I started using alcohol and, and then cocaine to actually to cope. So celebrating and medicating are completely different things. And it was when I started medicating that, you know, I, I stopped putting effort into my work and I was doing kind of like bare minimum um i still got lots of business like because I, I knew how to do the work but i just i wasn't really into it and then i met this person who i thought was actually really really into me and he actually wanted me to stop drinking and all this stuff and he comes over to my house one day basically asked me if i want to go on a trip with him you know he's seeing how i'm struggling and i'm like oh sure like that sounds like awesome um but he actually asked me before we went if i wanted to bring drugs back and i was I just thought the question was just like so bizarre and I was like heck where is he, is he coming from and I said no absolutely not and he's so he's like I'm sorry like I I made a mistake I I can't believe I even asked you that and so he left and I go out that night and he asked me again um but this time he said don't worry there'll be nothing nothing shady going on he's like you know I, I can't believe I ever thought I'd you know think to involve you in something like that and me being out at, at night after a couple of drinks I kind of believe the best in him and I said yes and we end up on this trip three days in you know things change drastically and I find out that you know I'm actually there to to bring drugs back with him and he says this is you know this was my choice and that you know it was just the alcohol and the drugs and you know that I had kind of like led him on to believe that I wanted to do this and all this stuff and I was scared because I really didn't want to do it and then I found out that he that he was actually in debt and that's why he needed to bring all these drugs back. And so, you know, people are like, why didn't you call for help? Why didn't you do anything? And I was like, I was in another country with the only, and the only person that I knew was him. Mm. And so I thought I could weasel my way out. I couldn't, wrapped up with two kilograms of drugs, put on an airplane, land at Pearson, and I'm not good at my job. I'm, you know, I was not trained for this position. I just wanted to go home. I wasn't, I don't want to profit from this. This was not like a, a capital gain that I was hoping to, you know, bring onto my, bring into my life. It was basically just a safety, a safety play, just a, a plan for me to get to safety. That's what it was. And got arrested because I was suspicious and my body language is off. And two and a half years later, after going through the courts, I went to prison. And it was before I went to prison that I really stopped playing the role of the victim, stopped playing defense and decided to play offense because I knew that despite the fact that the law said I was a really bad person and despite the fact that I, that I'd failed, I knew that I had a lot of potential and I began to reflect on all my past accomplishments and really weigh on, on, on the support that I had and, and the belief that was bestowed upon me to, to kind of change. And part of that was ditching the alcohol and, and the drugs and coming up with something really cool and exciting to kind of bring into this next part of my life. And I also wanted to create a new career for myself and, in prison, I, I found that inspiration, and that was actually through uh, through popcorn. And I so I started a business in prison, which I now employ myself and or other people who have also had problems with addiction or incarceration in the past. 
So you, when you went into prison, you went in with a mindset and a mission that you were going to help yourself, you were going to become a better person, but you also really wanted to help others. Mm -hmm. How do you take such a negative and go into it with such a positive mindset? Because ne being negative doesn't get you anywhere. If anything, it sets you back. And I'd had enough of the setback. Like I was tired at, at like running on a, 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 like a hamster, you know, like you're not getting anywhere and you're putting so much effort into being negative and it really doesn't get you anywhere and so you but you also have to be realistic like you can't just be like oh like everything's gonna be fine you really have to think about how your actions harmed others and how maybe your behaviors and 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 maybe things that you did out of you know emotional challenges you could have done differently mm -hmm. and when I got to prison I also saw how so many other people in prison had experienced like those same emotional traumas um so many more people had suffered other tremendous abuse like way worse than mine and i was like it really like allowed me to appreciate just how lucky i was to uh, have that family support because the majority of people in there didn't they were like really on their own or culturally they couldn't really even tell people they were in prison because they would be banished from their family like there's just so many obstacles that other people faced and i faced obstacles too for sure but i really wanted to not to share my story, but share the stories of others to really like, if we're going to like put people in prison, we have to like help them out of prison because prison actually, you know, it kills you financially. It kills you emotionally, kills you emotionally. It kills you like psychologically, even like physically sometimes. Right. So if, if we really want these types of systems to even maybe work a little bit, we have to be supportive of others when they come out. And that's what I noticed is that there was no support. There was surveillance that was you know cloaked as support but it wasn't actually support and so that's what i wanted to to create so tell me about uh how you know you went in with this mission and you know, began living a prison life mm -hmm. how did that become comeback snacks how how did that was it a team effort was it something that you know you observed and said hey this could really work um and then how did that actually become a business for you so I didn't know it was going to be popcorn when I went in. Like I knew I went in with that with that mindset to to build something. But of course, like you can't build something without getting inspired by your environment. And so, we, what brought people together in prison often was, was food and and snacking, and because that brought joy, that brought laughter, that brought like culinary creativity, mm -hmm. and those were all like things that helped us get through this difficult time that we were in. And so one of the more popular snacks was, was popcorn. And we were having this little Super Bowl gathering and someone put like a, a combination of like lemon pepper and dill on the, on the popcorn. I was like, holy crap, this is like really, really good. And, and then we were like sharing this popcorn and I was listening to her story and she was talking about like how scared she was to kind of go on the outside and how she didn't even really want to because she didn't know what she would even do. And that's when I wanted to put two and two together. Um, to help showcase, you know, the hope that you have to instill in people that they're going to have something when they get out and also instill in them that they are mean, they are worth something and that they are talented and, you know, we're all human beings. And so popcorn was the vector and then the stories and struggles of others. And the, I think the, like the pro, like a lot of people have very promising futures. Like they have so much talent, but they just have so many obstacles in the way with very limited resources. And so I just put two and two together and decided that I would make a popcorn company because sure, there's lots of popcorn companies, but there's no popcorn companies that do more than that. Um, I mean, like, I'm sure there are, but like, not like, not like this one, not the one that really like takes an issue and uses it as a way to, to spread awareness and hopefully make meaningful change to people's lives and to society. Mm -hmm. Tell me about the stigma that is associated with being an ex-con and how that can contribute um, to, to reoffending or you know looking for ways to, to go back into old habits. And how is your company helping them, helping women who, who are out of prison to get away from that, that habitual behavior? Oh, for sure. So when you come out of prison, first thing is you have a record and getting employment with a record is something that's very, very challenging, um, especially when you're right, when you're right out, if you've like, a, you know, limited job experience, you have lots of talents, but maybe you've just used them in the wrong way, or you've, you, you've suffered tremendous, tremendous physical abuse or sexual abuse or emotional abuse. And you haven't healed from that because prison doesn't help you heal anything. Mm. Um, 
So people are often even scared to go into the workforce because they're still holding all of this, all of this in. And so there's, there's the jobs, you know, there's a hiring stigma. There's also um, trying to get housing when you come out of prison is, is difficult if you have a record. If you have very limited credit often because you've been incarcerated. Um, even education wise, sometimes it's hard to enroll in certain programs if you have a record. So there's all these barriers. If you want to start a business, it's hard to get a loan if you have a record. Mm. And so on one side, we offer em employment with Comeback Snacks. And I'm like, come to work with us if you are just coming out of prison. Or even if you like want something to do on the side to maybe like, I don't know, work as a team to share your stories. Because it's a very safe place to work. And I find that when you have a safe place to work and you can be honest about your past and even maybe like your last week, like what happened in your life without feeling shame, you actually want to stay there longer. Mm -hmm. and it generates happiness and, and belief in, in yourself. So that's the one side, it is employment within the organization. And the other thing that I do is actually um, advocacy with, I work with like other um, institutions, like I work with other businesses and help them modify their HR policies. So because I know that we can't do it alone, like as one organization, so part of the bigger plan is to help other companies change as well. Because if we just don't hire people with records, we're we're limiting the potential of our of our workforce and our economy and our, our growth as a country. Tell me about uh, some of the turnaround stories that you've been a part of through Comeback Snacks that you're most proud of and, and maybe they're part of your team now. Uh, I know when you go on your website you can read a few of them and even there's there's a woman who, who isn't ready to share it at this point but you're helping her get there. Tell me about these stories that you're most proud of. Um, My number one is definitely my right hand, her name's Christine, and she actually started out as a volunteer. She's in recovery, and she, she's had some, some run-ins with the law, but like her addiction was her main challenge to living a happy life and, and finding meaningful employment and finding a safe place to work. And so she's like, she started as a volunteer because she just like wanted, a, she's, she saw it as therapy, and now she's like pretty much a full-time employee now. Mm -hmm. um, she helps with everything. So she's like, Emily, like, I, I feel like I've grown so much, and I feel like I'm like, it's, I, I feel less shame now with my story. And, you know, now she's doing interviews, right? And I'm like, all right, I'll help you set up your first podcast interview. You know, she's like, I don't know how to do this. You know, she's like, she's like I'm not good at technology, but how do I do it? And I'm like, okay, sure, sounds good. And then, um, yeah, my other staff member, it was very difficult for her to like also find a job because she, there's like a lot of shame associated like with any, with any charge, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, and then there's like some security issues around her, her past relationships. So that's why she doesn't really want to, publicize herself and she just doesn't she's just still nervous but she's so good at what she does like she can pop popcorn like no one else like I'm like girl how did you do that so fast you know and I'm and then I'm like okay like do you want to start meeting customers and because first she started in the kitchen and she's she's pretty shy and like, now she's out doing events and now I'm going to put her um, on some accounts so she's going to be like driving to meet customers and everything like that and she's at the event last night so that was awesome as well very cool it must feel so good to see this transition and people who you know come into it so shy and then come out of their shell and actually find their purpose mm -hmm. no it's awesome and it's just like seeing how willing they are to to try new things and to learn new skills because there's so much more than like whatever happened to them just like no one gives them a chance because of like company policy or whatever right so it's uh like our company company policy is like come talk to me. <laughs> That's it. Like, let's do it. Like, like, let's find something to make it work so I can like learn more about them and see what they like to do. And I'm not going to throw them in something that I know they maybe aren't com comfortable with. Right. So, um, it's growing pains. Right. But first and foremost, like I want them to feel comfortable and, and valued. And that comes before anything else. So how can our viewers, uh, get engaged, help purchase the popcorn, uh, and is there any type of role that you're seeking out right now that, you know, you need help with in a volunteer capacity? How can they help? Honestly, if people just share about the, you know, the journey and if people want, have stories they want to share, like I'm more than happy to feature other people's comeback stories. Like I love hearing people, um, you know, share their stories with pride because that, that builds confidence and confidence really builds like longevity, I think on a personal level, like on a personal happiness level. So just turning that, that liability into, into an asset it is really like a strong, it's, a, it's good to feel strong, right? And when people, when people can see you strong, like that's when they're, they see like they believe in what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So it's all about these, like this, this slow transition. Um, because obviously the system isn't 
isn't very like, you know, they're not a confidence booster, right? They just tell you, you did this wrong thing once and they, they never let it go. They are the biggest grudge holders of all time, but yet they only provide band-aid solutions and those band-aids just create worse wounds. So they never heal. You are a prime example of someone who, you know, sees a problem and a way to fix it. And thank you so much for being here today and for speaking with me. Uh, if you're if you're looking for more information on buying the popcorn, following the journey, becoming a part of the journey, you can head to comebacksnacks.com. Also on Facebook and Instagram at Comeback Snacks. Thank you so much, Emily. Thanks so much, Natasha.